Assalamu alaikum. Hello, everybody, viewers of my channel. This is Dr. Orsi Azeji. Uh, I'm based in Tirana, Albania, for the people who follow my videos and interviews. Uh, today, I'm going to speak about what is going on in the Middle East and um, in the wider conflict that we have in the Middle East between Iran and uh, the U United States. And we're going to talk about what is happening in Albania, where I'm based, and uh, in a way <laughs> how the American and Iranian conflict is in a way impacting uh, the policies and the politics of Albania. Uh, today, we have the honor to have Mr. Scott Bennett joining us from the United States. Mr. Scott is a former U.S. Army Psychological Operational Officer and Counterterrorism Analyst. Mr. Scott, welcome to my uh, show. I'm very happy. Yeah, I'm very, very happy to have you with us. Uh, today, we're going to talk about <laughs> the recent clash between the United States and Iran. Uh, a clash that, uh, according to some analysts, might even uh, send the world into a major military conflict. Uh, the conflict for which we are talking about uh, uh, has its genesis since uh, uh, the creation of uh, the state of Israel and the conflict that the West initiated with uh, the Muslim world. This conflict, <laughs> which continues from the time of the British colonization of uh, Palestine, uh, recently have seen a, a, a new height. On January 3rd, uh, 2020, we witnessed how the American forces killed uh, General Qasem Soleimani, the head of the Iranian Quds Force, and Abu Mahdi al muhandis deputy chief of the Popular Mobilization Committee or Hajj al Shabi, the Iraqi uh, military which fought against uh, ISIS in uh, Iraq and in Syria. And the killing of these two top Iraqi and Iranian uh, generals uh, led the Iranian army on January 7 to hit US bases in Iraq. Uh, for many people, especially us who live in the Mediterranean, uh, the clash between the United States and Iran is really worrying because a major war and conflict in the Middle East, especially with Iran, which is a major regional power, is going to affect all of us in Europe. We already uh, have seen what happened during the so-called Arab Spring, when the American government, in a way, <laughs> supported the creation of terrorist uh, groups in uh, Syria and in Iraq, organizations like uh, uh, ISIS and Nusra, we have seen the mass radicalization of Muslims in Europe, where, in a way, the Saudis, <laughs> the Emiratis, and other dictatorial Arab regimes, in a way, brainwashed European Muslims convincing them that the fight against the government of Syria was a just war, was a jihad, was an Islamic duty for Muslims. And what happened was that from 2012 to 2014, we had mass radicalization of Muslims in Europe. Many uh, uh, brainwashed Muslims by the Saudi official propaganda they left Europe and they went to kill innocent people in Syria. But what happened in Syria during the so-called Arab Spring is part of a greater geostrategical war that the United States is doing against the Arabs and Muslims in the Middle East. Uh, this war, which started uh, since the fall of the Soviet Union with the war against Iraq, which led to the destruction of Iraq, has continued with wars against Sudan, uh, Somalia, uh, uh, Syria, uh, and, and, and finally Yemen. As a result, what we see nowadays here in Europe, we see huge waves of Muslim refugees, people who are living 
and abandoning their home countries in Yemen, in Syria, in Iraq, in Egypt, in Palestine. And these people are going towards Western Europe. We have millions of Muslim refugees nowadays in France, in Italy, in Germany, and even we here in the Balkans, Greece, Albania, Macedonia, Serbia, uh, Croatia, uh, Hungary, we're seeing huge waves of desperate people who are abandoning the Middle East and they're coming in Europe to find a refuge. The only winner in this uh, big uh, geo, uh, 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 geostrategic game that is being played in the Middle East is Israel. Israel is winning the battles. Israel has managed in a way <laughs> to destroy its enemies by using the American army, the American military, and uh, sometimes even Saudi and other money by creating conflicts and by destroying the peace and security of whole Middle East. Now, the recent conflict between <laughs> Iran and the United States seems to be probably the final conflict that the American imperialism is doing in the Middle East. God forbid if uh, 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 an all-out war will break out between Iran and the United States, we will see millions of Iranians, uh, refugees, marching towards Europe in desperation. On the other hand, we know very well <laughs> that Iran is a major power in the Middle East, and for the Americans, it's not that easy to fight Iran. Because while the United States has surrounded Iran with many military bases, and Israel uh, kills the pro-Iranian militias in, in Syria and in Iraq, on the other hand, Iran has surrounded Israel with thousands of, of, of missiles, and we have many Islamic militias, uh, uh, res Muslim resistant groups in, in Lebanon, in Palestine, in Syria, in Iraq, who are resisting the total American and Israeli destruction of the Middle East, and in particular, the destruction of Palestine. Because as we all know, and we saw with the recent uh, uh, peace plan of Trump, the major aim of the US administration is the total destruction of Palestine and the annihil annihilation of Palestinians and the creation of the greater Israel, which will rule over the Arabs and Muslims in the Middle East. Now, where does Albania comes into this equation? <laughs> For people who are watching these videos, they might probably know that Albania is a Muslim majority country. We were part of the Ottoman Empire. We were created as a state in uh, 1913, after the first Balkan War. <laughs> when the Ottomans lost and the British together with the Italians and the Russians and the French and uh, the Austrians, they invented Albania as a Muslim majority country in Europe. Albania has been a country of a great uh, uh, co uh, religious coexistence. We have Muslims here, majority who are Sunnis. We have some Bektashis who are Shia. And then we have Orthodox Christians of the Greek read, and then we have Catholics as well. But what is happening in Albania since the fall of the Soviet Union, because during the Cold War, we were part of the Eastern Bloc. The Americans brought their own version of capitalism here. They ruined our economy and mafia and corruption rules the country. Albania is one of the major drugs exporters in Europe. But if this is not enough, since 2013, the American government <laughs> under the Obama administration, probably as part of the Iran nuclear deal, started bringing in Albania some uh, commanders of the Mujahideen al Haq. Uh, the Mujahideen al Haq, until 19, uh, 2012, they were listed as a terrorist organization by the United States, Canada, European Union, and what have you. Suddenly, their uh, terrorist label was dropped, and in 2013, we had the first group of these people. They came here as humanitarian refugees, and we said, okay, we Albanians, we, we saved Jews during Second World War, so no problem to have even some Iranians coming here without knowing who they were. But then what happened after the Iran nuclear deal in 2015, John Kerry 
came to Tirana in February, on February 2016, and uh, with our Catholic Prime Minister and the uh, very Zionist Prime Minister that we have at Irama, they suddenly told to Albanians that you are going to take 3,000 Iranian Mujahideens. These people were brought to Albania from Iraq. Albanians were, were shocked when they came here. They were scared. They said, why you bring these people here? What do they want in here? We have enough troubles. Uh, in that time, I went on TV <laughs> And I told to our politicians, I told them, okay, if these guys are such good guys, why the United States doesn't take them to send them somewhere in Texas or Alaska or what have you? Or why doesn't Israel or Saudi Arabia take them? But nobody uh, heard our voice. There was a huge media, uh, uh, I mean, uh, huge fear in Albania about the coming of Mac, but the Americans managed to bring them here. At the beginning, Americans told us <laughs> that these people are war refugees. UNHCR was involved and they told us, oh, please take these people, save these people because Iran want to kill them. So far, so good. But what happened after the election of Trump in the United States as a president and coming of uh, John Bolton as a national security advisor, these people who were brought to Albania as, uh, as, uh, as asylum seekers, they built a military camp in a village called Manza in the city of Durus, and they organized themselves in a military fashion. Apart from this, <laughs> they made everyday calls for jihad or war against Iran. So they behaved like ISIS under Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, they have a leader, her name is Mariam Rajavi. She depicts himself, herself as a holy person, like Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi used to depict himself. And she tells to her soldiers that I am the messenger of Imam Mahdi, and I am, I am brought from Imam Mahdi to, to, to topple the government of Iran and to make you Mujahideens the rulers of Iran. Exactly what Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi was saying when he was fighting the government of Iraq and the government of Syria by declaring that the rulers of Iraq and Syria were infidels. And now it is my holy duty as Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi to kill everybody and for me to be the caliph of Islam. Mariam Rajavi does the same thing. And what is most interesting is that we in the Balkans since 2014, after the interference of the Americans, we have changed our penal code. According to the new penal code that the Americans forced on Albanians, Greeks, Macedonians, uh, uh, Serbs, and the Bo people from Bosnia, is that if somebody <laughs> in our countries, in, in, in the Balkans, makes calls for war against a foreign country, this person is labeled or is, 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 is considered to be a terrorist, he is arrested and he is being sent in jail. However, what happens in the case of Albania is that our government does not uh, implement its authority when it comes to MAC. The Mujahideens make calls for regime change in Iran, they make calls for jihad. And moreover, we see top American politicians from the late John McCain to John Bolton, Rudy Giuliani, who come to Tirana and scream to us and tell us, well, you have to support the jihad of these good jihadists. Mr. Scott, based on your uh, great experience in the conflicts in, of the Middle East, I'd like to know to your idea, what do you think and for what is going on with us? Well, Dr. Alex Alexi, I, I appreciate your very astute and erudite analysis, and I agree with your assessment. Uh, you're very accurate in your, your historical summary of the uh, past 20 years, I think. And we, we're we always best to start and examine the facts, because the facts uh, you know, are the building blocks of, of truth and wisdom and propaganda and politics and opinion. Uh, is really the fog and, and the, uh, the, the psychological manipulations. And that's something that I worked in in the Army and in the State Department and at Booz Allen Hamilton 
Uh, I was also in the Bush administration from 2003 to 2008. I was all over Washington. I did all sorts of colorful things, and uh, some of which I can talk about, some of which I can't because I, I had a top secret uh, clearance. Um, but I, I can say, uh, as the foundation for this, this discussion, I reported much of what you've been discussing to military officials, to government officials, in a report called Shell Game, uh, and that's available at shellgamewhistleblower.com. And in my report, I summarized much of the Saudi Arabian Wahhabist Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula uh, terrorist financing that was going to their Wahhabi Salafist mercenaries uh, that were being used in the destabilization of Libya, of Syria, uh, of, 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 uh, it, and the mobilization for, for positioning against Iran. So I reported that, and I reported how the Hillary Clinton Foundation and the Hillary Clinton State Department and Barack Obama and Eric Holder and Lanny Brewer at the Department of Justice and uh, Union Bank of Switzerland in particular uh, and Robert Wolf, chairman of the Americas of Union Bank of Switzerland, were all conspiring to channel uh, hundreds of millions of dollars in Union Bank of Switzerland accounts to their mercenary forces. And this report was ignored completely. Uh, and I was penalized uh, severely uh, to the point where I, I've had to take legal action in the courts and legal action against the uh, the Obama and Clinton administration uh, people. So it, it's a terrible tragedy for me to, to have to listen to something that I reported on in 2000 and uh, originally 2011, 2012, uh, from whistleblowers, from people that actually worked in the financing of terrorism, uh, many of whom were thrown in prison to silence them and cover it up in the United States. So uh, the, the, the American, the, the United States in many regards is a, is a police state. It is in the throes of a social revolution, I believe. It is uh, the victim of its own uh, self-destruction, if you will, its own political lobotomization that occurred on September 11th, 2001, on the uh, attacks of New York, the Twin Tower attacks. And that has set in motion all of these actions which you're describing. And uh, that's the, always the best place to start. We can go back before to the Mujahideen al Khalik and how in the 1970s they were waging terrorist attacks and murdering Americans. Uh, they had 23 attacks before 1979, 26 <laughs> after. So they, they represent a, uh, a very fanatical and intolerant and violent uh, group. They always have, but they've become used as a pawn by the neocon Zionists who are deploying them for military operations in Syria and Libya and, and uh, Iran. Um, but that was the 1970s. And of course, we, we go through Saddam Hussein, Saddam Hussein funding and financing and, and helping the Mujahideen and Khalid. Um, and then, of course, through the 1990s, we saw Bill Clinton and the disintegration of uh, Russia. And that was a terrible tragedy, I think, because instead of welcoming Russia into the orbit of the American uh, people, and, and believe me, Americans, the people, have no hostility towards Russia or Iran, for that matter. It is the government, the Zionists, the neocons that uh, you know follow this endless war conquest empire modality that are constantly uh, thwarting the will of the American people. But the American people really were hopeful that Russia and the United States would become a close friend and ally. And instead, we tried to cannibalize Russia. And that created a lot of hostility. A lot of the crime and, and uh, mafia situations were, were, were metastasizing like a cancer in the country. And I think Vladimir Putin's rise after Yeltsin really saved the country in many respects. 
and he's continuing, I think, to lead in a in a very good way. He he does some things or misses some opportunities, but uh, you know, I think overall he's done good. He I I would say Russia is respon <laughs> Russia is responsible in many ways for a lot of the chaos and problems that we have today because they have failed to act. They've failed to thwart and stop and object uh, with a violent political uh, outrage uh, against the United States militaristic colonial ambitions, whether it's in Venezuela or, or the Middle East or in Yugoslavia uh, or in Ukraine. All of these uh, episodes of regime change by the United States have been terrible tragedies that have decimated uh, the you know the sovereignty and the and the happiness and the and the, the productivity and prosperity of these countries and and it's very sad for me to say that uh, because I was brought up to believe America was a light in the world but I see the United States its policies extinguishing the lights and cultures of these other nations and subjecting them to the vassal state uh, role and and confiscating their resources and and Ukraine is a great example of the ruin that the United States has brought to Ukraine. But uh, all of that, you know, is sort of the preamble to what happened on September 11th. And I won't discuss too much into it because we're, we're moving into the other subjects. But September 11th, 2001, was the great false flag attack where it was, and it was shown that uh, the Twin Towers were hit by planes, allegedly by Saudi Arabians, and they miraculously fell into their own footprint uh violating all laws of physics and science and architecture and i've done exhaustive research into these areas and the the fact is there were nuclear devices used in the in the 911 events that took down the buildings the building 7 solomon building which was a command center that was never reported never included in the nist report fell into its own footprint it was detonated it wasn't hit by anything uh, and the Pentagon, where they were auditing $2.3 trillion that had gone missing. And incidentally, my boss at Booz Allen Hamilton, Dove Zakheim, a dual Israeli citizen, Rabbi Dove Zakheim, was the comptroller at the Pentagon at the time. Uh, the section that was auditing missing $2.3 trillion was miraculously hit, allegedly, by the airplane. Uh, but upon examination, uh, there was no airplane wreckage at the scene, and uh, the reports I'm getting from military that were there was it was a missile that was fired from an Israeli Dolphin-class submarine, and uh, it was targeted. And I can say I drove by the Pentagon the next day, and I didn't see a tail section or planes or luggage or any of the traditional shrapnel or wreckage that would come from a large aircraft crashing into a cement structure. I saw a hole with a blue tarp covering it. That tells me it was probably a missile, not a plane. But all of that was theater. All of that was uh, a psychological operation on the American public to uh, mobilize them for this war on terror, war against Muslim Wahhabi uh, entities. Uh, and they used the convenient scapegoat of Colonel Tim Osmond of the CIA, who was named Osama bin Laden. And they blamed this on him. And uh, Osama bin Laden, of course, was reported to have died in a Dubai hospital in December of 2001 from kidney failure. But he was a convenient scapegoat. And he was used up until, I think, 2011 uh, or, or 2000, yeah, 2011 uh, when he was reportedly killed in, in Pakistan, which was false. And the American SEAL team was also taken out that was part of that. But this was all a psychological operation designed to launch an American juggernaut across the Middle East, taking out seven countries in five years. And I'm sure you're familiar with that. Yes. Uh, Mr. Scott, if, if I can interrupt you for a second. I mean, yes. yeah, we know what Americans did with 9-11. They needed a justification, like Hitler used the burning of Reichstag in order to... to to declare war on communism. <clears throat> we know the story. My worry now as a European now is that we know I'm, 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 I'm a European, I'm from Eastern Europe, we were from the, the Soviet bloc, we know what Americans did to us after the collapse of the Soviet Union, how they destroyed our economy, 
we have seen since uh, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, how they continued in the Middle East. They destroyed Iraq, they destroyed Syria, they destroyed the prosperous Libya. And we see now, we have them here, we have them in, in, in Albania, we have them in Italy, in Greece, desperate uh, Syrians and Iraqis who before the war, they had villas. They were living like, 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 like princes in the Middle East. And now they have nothing, and they are beggars in Europe. We know that. Now, my, my question is this. <clears throat> with, with, the, with the bringing of Mac here in Albania, what is the nexus of the American project? Will they also destroy Western Europe? We see Italians, Germans, the Brits, the French who are enraged because they, they, they are seeing, I mean, their cultures and their countries being invaded by some, some victims of these wars in the Middle East. And this, these poor Iraqis and Syrians and Libyans and Africans, when they go to Italy and to France and to Britain, they, they, they have no mission to invade Europe, but they're simply escaping the hell that the Americans have created. Now, the question is this, <coughs> we have Mac in Albania, and Mac is being treated exactly like Osama bin Laden was treated in 1980s in the United States, and the Mujahideens who were depicted, in, de depicted like great uh, uh, patriots who were fighting the communists and the Soviets and what have you. We have the Mujahideens now, especially with the Trump administration, who from some asylum seekers, who in a way were brought to Albania, when they were brought here, they told to us, we are bringing these people here to die, because most of them are in their 60s. Many of these Mujahideens who, were, who have come to Albania, they have made horrible crimes in Iraq and Iran. They have killed people, they have bombed cities, they, have killed uh, civilians, military. Uh, Mariam Rajavi, when Saddam Hussein <coughs> went against the Kurds, uh, she uh, and her uh, second husband, Masoud Rajavi, they led the Mujahideens to crush and to kill the Kurds and uh, the, the Shia Arabs of Iraq. When these people were brought to Albania, may, many of them were given new identities. We have seen with many of these people uh, when they go in public, they go with fake names because they are afraid from their past. They are afraid that Kurds, that Iraqis, that Syrians, that Iranians in one way or another will find them and will sue them in the court of law for what they have done. When the Americans brought them here, they told us, look, <laughs> these people were, were killers and terrorists. And you, Albania, are a weak country. You cannot do anything against us because we topple your government and we do anything we want to do. So you have to take them and shut up and they're going to, to retire here. So, so far, everything looked okay. I mean, Albania is a, a country run by many mafia organizations. We are major drug exporters in Western Europe. The American embassy here rules with an iron fist. We know everything. But now what happened is that after coming of John Bolton in the White House, and Rudy Giuliani, these people are being radicalized. Yeah. And <clears throat> what we are seeing is a jihad 2.0 that the Americans are again creating. If during the war in Syria, we had John McCain going to Syria and meeting jihadis there and depicting them as freedom fighters who are fighting against the ruthless dictator Assad, then we will bring you Syrians I mean, uh, democracy and what you want, and we know what Americans will bring when they come. Now, this fanatical sect, they're a sect. These yeah. people, which we believe they are around three to 4,000, they, they live in a close paramilitary camp. They are not allowed to marry. They are not allowed to see TV. They are not allowed to have phones. They are not allowed to communicate with their families. They're not allowed to mix men and women. They live separately. Mm -hmm. They wake up every morning and they shout their loyalty to Mariam Rajavi and curse the, the, the government and people of Iran. And they say, you are agents of the Mullahs and we're going to topple you. These people who are being radicalized every day, they are only 1,000 kilometers far from Rome, the Vatican, mm -hmm. the place <laughs> where Western civilization was built, where mm -hmm. Christianity was formed. Mm -hmm. 
So these people who can go with a speedboat to Italy for only one hour, they are here and they are being used to wage a new conflict in the Middle East yeah. and now a conflict against Iran. And coming back to the tricks that Americans are very good at, <laughs> uh, if you have read the news of the past uh, two years, we hear in the news that uh, two Iranian agents were caught in Belgium. They wanted to bomb the, to bomb the Mujahideen al Hal. One Iranian diplomat was arrested in Vienna. These are all fake news. Yeah. What MEC is doing here, and Al Jazeera did a very documentary about them like a year or two ago, they have a huge lab in their camp with Twitter accounts, and they only write to praise Trump and Bolton and Mike Pompeo and Mike Pence whenever they want to do something against Iran. If you go to the Twitter account of uh, Pompeo or of Pence or of uh, <coughs> uh, Trump, whenever they speak something against Iran, you'll see under them maybe probably like 1,000 tweets. They are Iranian names. And they say, Trump, you are the greatest hero of Iranian nation, blah, blah, blah. All these people are these jihadis who are sitting here in Albania. Right. And who are, they have a troll factory. Each of them maybe have like five fake uh, Twitter uh, accounts. And they keep on pushing and pushing and inciting the Western and the American public opinion for going to war against their own country. Right. And in the past three years, they have been very good on creating fake stories. Let me give you one example. In March 2018, <laughs> we had a big Congress here in Tirana, Albania, about Imam Ali, who is one of the saints of the Bektashi community here. We had the Bektashi community inviting many journalists throughout the world, and among others, there were even two Iranian journalists from Irib, the state TV of Iran. The Mujahideens told to the Americans, we want you to arrest these people because they are terrorists. They ordered our anti-terror police, these two people, they were detained. They were journalists. They had cameras. They had nothing. And our authorities told them, OK, sorry, nothing to do with you. You can go back to your country. What men did is they created fake news. They said Albania has detained two Iranian terrorists who wanted to plant a bomb in, in, in Albania and to kill us, the Mujahideens. This news was taken by Fox News and many neocon medias in the US. And later it was tweeted by Mike Pompeo himself, who wrote a tweet, uh, a tweet and said, we congratulate the prime minister of Albania for saving the Mujahideens from two Iranian terrorists. We have Albanian journalists here in Albania. There is a friend of mine, his name is Georgi Fanasi, who investigated the whole story. We went to the police station and these people, they were journalists. But MEC is being used by the uh, U.S. administration and CIA to create fear in Europe and fake news about Iran. Mm -hmm. And the whole story, what is happening now is that uh, the Americans, CIA probably or FBI, I don't know who, they are using MEC to, to create fear in Europe against Iran. Because what I believe that Mike Pompeo and other evangelical uh, extremists that you have in the U.S. government, what they want to do, they want to provoke Europe and they want to send Europe, number one, to break the Iran nuclear deal, number two, to send Europeans to fight with Iran. The European Union is resist resisting this. The European MPs and, and the, the policymakers in, in Paris and in Berlin and in, in Brussels, they know the game. They have even stopped MEC from accessing the European Parliament. But MEC still with the support of Israel and the CIA, is managing to create a lot of fake news. Mm -hmm. Now, the question is, what do you think is next? Well, I think you're right. Uh, we're witnessing the uh, puppets of uh, the U.S. government, uh, Pompeo and John Bolton and Giuliani. These people are traitors. They're war mongers. They are on the pay of MEK. They are paid $20,000 plus to, sp to speak at their rallies. Uh, this is a uh, full propaganda war, an information war against uh, the American people and the European people 
uh, by the CIA, by the Mossad, uh, by the Israeli Zionists, it, to, to continue their Odin and on plan, to continue their expansion. What will happen, I believe, the, the miscalculation has been that the Europeans will go along or agree with the policies of the United States. And I think because of the internet, because of 20 years of the slow accumulation uh, uh, and the absorption of the poisons that have been unleashed by the U.S. interference in, in international meddling and regime change and wars, and you're very right, all of these uh, native peoples from Africa and Syria and Iraq and the Middle East that have made an exodus into Europe uh, are, are seen uh, you know, by Europeans as uh, overburdening their countries, their cultures, their social systems, and then added to that, any sort of Wahhabist intolerant fanaticism is causing a great deal of uh, ethno, uh, you know, rising, right wing rising, uh, uh, sort of a, a political uh, social movement to uh, expunge and rediscover their native European uh, culture, mentality and habitats. And I think they're, Europe is going to be breaking up. The European Union is breaking up with Brexit, and I think other countries are going to follow suit because of this uh, fracture, this weight, this, this uh, trauma that's been unleashed upon Europe. And I think Europeans will incline more closely to Russia. That's why Russia and Lavrov are having very positive effects in Venezuela and the, in the South American, Central American community. They're overthrowing the Monroe do Doctrine because once again, the countries that the United States touch do, do not turn into gold. They do not turn into prosperous, happy, functioning societies. In fact, they are degenerated, decayed, and destroyed. And I think that uh, the illusion of American prosperity is, is becoming clear as a nightmare in, instead. So the European communities, and I'm from Europe originally, before I, I uh, came as a young boy to uh, America. Uh, so I'm, I'm originally from Great Britain. And I see Britain and Scandinavia and uh, uh, Germany, the, the traditional Celtic, Scandinavian, Germanic countries, the Northern countries, uh, breaking off and being more in affinity with Russia uh, which is um, probably going to replace much of the U.S. influence. There could be great deals of internal uh, fake false flag terrorist attacks. It's clear the MEK is going to be used in uh, social disruptions and uh, blaming uh, the Iranians for uh, terrorist attacks in, in Europe. I think that's what we're going to see, but the reaction by the Europeans will be to expel both the United States and uh, these sort of communities, these people, these camps, as you described it earlier, where they are living in very Spartan environments, men and women separate, they're dedicating their lives to jihad and that sort of a thing. So the, the, the awakening of Europe and the awakening Amer of Americans is, is already taking place and they recognize, and every American really dislikes, despises John Bolton. Uh, the conservatives, the conservative uh, Christian, uh, for the most part, myself included, we, we look at John Bolton and Pompeo as liars and warmongers and dangerous people that President Trump should never have around him. And Excuse President, me, uh, let me, let me just ask you, are these people mentally normal? No, they, no. Because, I mean, they, they, I see even people like Marco Rubio that you have. They, no. they, they, they write on their Twitter accounts verses from the Bible, you know? I mean, when I, when, when I see the, their personal Twitter accounts, it, it, it seems to me like I'm reading the Twitter of Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. Only Abu Bakr was quoting the Quran, they called, quote, the Old Testament. And then they pray for war. I mean, what kind of religion is this that these people have? I mean, these are not the teachings of Jesus Christ, no, isn't it? No, it's, it's not. See, what it is, is an, a strain of Christian Zionism. Christian Zionism is a delusion where the Christian church believes falsely and it believes in the heresy that... Uh, God ordains uh, Christians to support 
by all means necessary, the Jew, uh, the Jerusalem, Israel, Zionist is translated into Jew, which is false. Uh, but the Christian apocalyptic Christian Zionist philosophy is uh, the, the Christian church is bound to support uh, by military action, by economic support, by prayers and faith and, and tourism, everything and anything that uh, Israel does. That's Mike, Pompen Mike Pence, the vice president. That's Mike Pompeo, the, the secretary of state. That's John Bolton. That's not that they're Christians, not that they're practicing really believing in Jesus Christ and the teachings of the Bible, but instead they pervert this into a, a political export, foreign policy, military policy. George Bush was, you know, really the originator of a lot of it. And they're they're pushing for this war, and that's why they're claiming sections of Jerusalem. They're moving the U.S. embassy to from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. They're granting the Golan Heights to Israel. They are bending over backwards to do everything. And the Zionists in the U.S. government are facilitating this, such as Segal Mandelker and uh, Munchkin, uh, the Secretary of Treasury. They have confiscated assets from groups that, for example, this is very important, the New Horizons Conference that occurred in Iran, which I participated in and, and went to in, in Iran, along with Phil Giraldi, a CIA analyst, retired, Michael Malouf, a Pentagon uh, 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 expert. Uh, I was State Department and military and about 20 other Americans, as well as Canadians and Australians, but we all went to the New Horizons conference. And upon return, we, we had a very successful uh, conference. We were on Iranian state TV. But upon our return, the Mujahideen al Khalid and the Zionists had convinced President <laughs> Trump to stop us from returning the following year. And in fact, I had experienced a personal attempt to be entrapped by a fake MEK agent, and that was most likely a Mossad operation uh, when I was at a conference in the United States. Uh, I was approached and I had reported that this was you know, not, not a, a real encounter, this was an attempt to entrap. So the, the MEK and the Zionists and the, and the, the Israeli uh, you know, Mossad are all working desperately to stop people of truth from speaking out and exposing uh, this and finding complete agreement with what you're saying. So that's what fuels a lot of this is the Christian Zionist uh, philosophy. It is not a true uh, shade or, or a perspective of Christianity. It is a perversion of Christianity. It is a cult, but that's where we find ourselves in this, in this time. I think it's, it's rapidly, uh, coming to an end, I think it's it's being exposed as a distortion, uh, but yet it's it's caused a lot of chaos and bloodshed and pain and suffering. Uh, what is the solution? Uh, I think the breakup of of Europe, the independent sovereign nations from uh, from de departing from all influence of the United States, uh, which may even include expulsion of U.S. embassies from countries uh, because they are platforms for regime change. They are platforms for control. And, Scott, uh, let, me make you, let, me, let me make you another question coming to what you were saying about <coughs> the, the, in a way, the totalitarian control that the American embassies are doing to uh, uh, European governments. We have seen the case of Albania. Uh, now, I mean, uh, we have the US embassy here, which dictates everything. The same thing you have in Kosovo. And uh, for our viewers, uh, let me give you a detail here, what is happening in Kosovo, uh, which the Albanians thought that we, we will create an independent state from Serbia, blah, 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 which in fact is, is a US colony. After the killing of General Qasem Soleimani, there was a lady in Kosovo, she was a Shia, and she wrote on her Facebook, she called uh, Americans criminals and she prayed for Qasem Soleimani. For this reason, 
she didn't call for, for jihad or for war against the United States, but only for calling Americans criminals. She was arrested and sent into uh, isolatory confinement for 30 days for doing nothing, you know? So, I mean, they have installed in, 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 in Eastern and Western Europe nowadays a reign of terror that we had during the time of Soviet Union, that you yes. had in Eastern Germany, the Stasi, we had the Sigurini here, or you had the KGB, or I mean, like, I mean, the, the fear that people have and governments and politicians have towards Americans can be compared to the fear that they had uh, from Stalin or, 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 or uh, Khrushchev or Brezhnev and what have you. Now, my, I, I have, because we are still discussing Christianity, we have the Vatican very close to Albania, the Catholic Church, mm -hmm. which in a way is one of the major foundations of Europe and European Christianity. And then we have even the European masonry. I mean, <laughs> the ideas of the European Union, of the French Republic, of uh, uh, Robespierre and, uh, and Voltaire and what have you, were to create an enlightened and, uh, 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 Europe. But what is happening is that we are seeing even these two old centers of European uh, religion and Illuminism who are silent and afraid to reject what the Americans are doing. Mm -hmm. We have the Vatican who is with the Palestinians, who they know very well what is going on. And by the way, in December 2018, <laughs> I celebrated uh, Christmas in Bethlehem. And mm -hmm. when you go to Bethlehem, you have to, to go through the Israeli wall and checkpoints. Mm -hmm. And maybe uh, the, the Church of Nat Nativity is probably one kilometer far from the wall. And when all the world celebrates the birth of Jesus, the people who celebrate in this church, they're afraid what will happen after the mass when they have to cross the border and to go to the Israeli side. Will they be killed? Will mm -hmm. they be arrested? And now when we see that even the Vatican is not speaking about what is going on, because after all, we, we, we know very well that the war against Syria, the, the war against Palestine is not a war against Islam. only. It is a war against the most ancient Christian civilization that we have in this planet. Mm -hmm. And we have many Christians, I mean, you can see them you know, from Syria to Palestine, who they yell at Europe, they tell to European Christians, where are you? Why you have left us to suffer like we are doing? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then we, we have these lunatics in, 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 in the United States, the so-called Zionist Christians, mm -hmm. who they are more Jews than Jews. Mm -hmm. I more, think- uh, more, 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 more Zionists, I'd say, not Jews, because there are yeah. many right to Jews who reject the fascism right. of the Israeli government. And right. Yeah, I, I worked uh, with some of the Jews when I was in Iran at the conference. Rabbi Dovid Weiss was there, and he had a very powerful and profound analysis of how Zionism and the Israeli government were, in fact, abominations to uh, the, the true Jewish uh, nature and, and religious calling. And Iran has, I think, 30... 30,000 or 30 million Jews living in Iran, and they have their own section of parliament, in fact. So uh, the the separation of Jewishness and Jews from Israeli Zionists is very important. And uh, the, the other p thing I wanted to uh, uh, impress is you had said something very accurate earlier about are these people mentally delusional? Are, are they all there? Are they thinking? Well, besides the Christian Zionist uh, philosophy, there is also another factor to care to really concentrate and think about. And you'll you'll be sensitive and understand this. In America, for the past fifty years, we have witnessed the greatest degradation of the human being in the history of the Earth. The American people, since the end of World War II, have been subjected to uh, laws and courts and, and government policy that has introduced homosexuality into the country, lesbianism, birth control, abortion, uh, pharmaceutical drugs, uh, rabid pornography, destroyed the family, welfare programs destroyed the black family, fatherless homes, 
yield uh, criminals, uh, young you know boys without fathers are rampant in violence. I studied this, of course, in my PhD and when I worked at the Heritage Foundation. So the, the disintegration of the family after World War II has yielded a very sick and mentally delusional, unstable society. Divorces have ruined young men and women in this country. And uh, materialism and hedonism uh, and the, 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 the saturation into uh, material and things and wealth has really been a plague and a, and a curse, I think, upon America. And we have left our, uh, our earlier uh, hunger and, uh, and thirst for righteousness, our earlier uh, constitutional, family-oriented, limited government, uh, and restrained foreign policy uh, we have we have abandoned that, and we have really become a schizophrenic nation in many regards. Uh, males, young alpha males, heterosexual, uh, bold men are attacked from every side, from the rabid feminists, and you see this played out in the American political uh, dialogues from Nancy Pelosi and Maisie Hirono and. Alexander Ortizio Cortez, there's a, a vile dislike for maleness, manhood, and you have effeminacy and beta males and all of these factors that are, are creating a cacophony in the, American, uh, in the American conversation, which was earlier quiet and composed and, and rational and reasonable and reflective. And now with all of this social decay and destruction that we've unleashed upon ourselves, uh, the tattoo epidemic is another uh, indicator of, of deep internal psychological discontent. Uh, all of these things I look at with great disgust, alarm, and absolute horror because the horror that is manifesting in the American populations uh, reflection is the picture of Dorian Gray. Uh, we present to this world this image of beauty and prosperity and success and freedom and liberty and democracy, and the grocery list goes on. But in reality, we are a country that sells pornography, homosexuality, lesbian, transgenderism, uh, the, the reassignment of, of uh, sexual identity, like you're, you're trading cards. And it's almost laughable, but the, the fruit of all of that death and insanity is death and insanity on the other countries of the world. Because as, as yeah. the blind Dutchman wrote, uh, fury and discontent, or I should say, say, the flying Dutchman had a quote, discontent assuages itself with fury and destruction. So it is the discontent in the American psyche that assuages itself, that relieves itself, by fury and destruction and control over the rest of the world. And it's, it's very important to recognize that because that's causing America to break up into, I think, a civil war. Because there are those of us that will not tolerate that, that will have no part in that evil, and that are rising up to, to elect people like Donald Trump with the expectation that he would stop these wars. He would cease and desist he would remove himself. Instead, he has failed and he is disappointed. And many people have said he has betrayed the people that voted for him because he has not ended the American presence in the Middle East. He has not befriended Russia as we all wanted and hoped. And of course, the Democrats and the leftists, the Zionists and the neocons have been pushing the Russia meddled in the United States election, which was a complete lie. Uh, then they sh shifted to the Ukraine uh, impeachment hoax, which has now failed in middle eye. Uh, but this, uh, this friction, this chaos, this uh, demand and push for war uh, was behind a lot of these movements in the U.S. government. They, I, they I, I, think, I think he's a hostage of the Israeli government and Netanyahu. Uh, I mean, when Trump came, all the world was hoping that he's going to change things because he said things that other people were not saying. And Americans really loved him because he said, they said, this is the man. 
who is going to save us from the feudal enslavement that the banks through their mortgage system is doing to us. Yes. I teach history in Albania school and when I teach to my students, <clears throat> I tell to my students that you, the Albanian workers are much richer than American or Canadian workers. When I tell this to them, they're surprised because uh, sometimes people see only numbers and they say, how come um, an American worker gets, let us say, 1,500 or $2,000 a month while we get much, much less? But I tell them, listen, you are not slaves of the banking system. Because for us in Eastern Europe, thanks to our socialist past, most of the people own their homes. Yes. We don't have bills to pay like the Americans have in the end yeah. of the day. Uh, the the uh, uh, Eastern Europeans, people like in Hungary, in Albania, even in Greece for that matter, in Macedonia, in Serbia, people work to get a salary. We don't have uh, to get a salary to only to feed themselves. We don't have bills like you have. We don't have mortgages. But what the Americans are doing, they're bringing what they have brought to the American so society, which is the destruction of the family, the LGBTism, <laughs> uh, 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 the, the, the attack against religion and tradition, and uh, the attack against the male as, as the principal head of the family, like Bible and Quran teaches us. And among yes. others, they're bringing us the cancer of the banking, uh, uh, yes. banking system, of the banking corporations. Yes. And uh, uh, <clears throat> for example, we have a prime minister here in Albania Edirama. He's a good friend of Tony Blair or, or George Soros. Now he has shifted himself with Mike Pompeo and those Zionist psychopaths that you have in your, your government. And he is the darling of the IMF and World Bank. I mean. I mean, these are people who are turning even us in Eastern Europe into colonies of your banking system. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons I believe that why the American imperialism attacks successful social countries like Libya, like Iraq, like Syria, like Iran, is even their social system. In yes. Libya, the people have their own, their own homes are living on welfare from the government. And look what they did to Libya. Mm -hmm. In Syria, when we meet many Syrian refugees in Europe, they tell us we have villas in our countries. What the hell do we want here? Why they, why you destroyed our country, they tell us. Yes. But uh, if I may, let me come back to you and uh, make you another question. Because when Trump came to power in the United States, we had the impression that he's a strong man. He likes to show off. He talks very tough. But surprise, surprise, what we saw on January 7, when the Iranian military attacked US bases in Iraq, he didn't do a thing. So what is going on with the American empire? Why they didn't hit back on Iran? What do you think? Well, I think he was looking for an excuse to de-escalate. He did. He knew that if he waged a war, it would end his presidency. He would be either impeached, or he would be assassinated, or he would be removed at the uh, election. No American wants a war with Iran, and people like General Douglas McGregor. Uh, media people like Tucker Carlson, who I've met and debriefed thoroughly about a lot of this material, uh, have all uh, on their platforms on Fox News and, and uh, uh, you know elsewhere have said the uh, having a war with Iran would destroy the Trump's presidency and it would be a disaster for the United States. So I think Iran exercised enormous restraint by not uh, destroying American naval ships or Qatar or these various bases, uh, by not uh, uniting with Iraq and doing a full-fledged war to expel the US uh, sources. Um, instead, Iran targeted a corner of a base uh, simply as a demonstration, as a symbolic gesture, not to actually kill uh, Americans, but to say, uh, if we want to strike you, we will, but we are simply pointing out our missile capability. And I think Donald Trump knew that and responded by trying to de-escalate, trying to uh, end it. I think he was lured and, and provoked into uh, killing Soleimani and then has made up lies and, and, and regurgitated the propaganda that the Zionists 
uh, have given him. Uh, he has no real understanding of Soleimani or, or his role in Syria or, or Iraq or Iran or for the last 40 years. I met General Soleimani's daughter when I was in Iran, and I, I found her to be very, very pleasant. And I think Soleimani was a revered uh, leader and respected uh, person in, in, in all of the, the Shia Muslim world, at least. And has been uh, instrumental in in the liberation of of Syria from the from the uh, Wahhabi Saudi Arabian CIA fanatics. Uh, but I I think Donald Trump recognizes Iran. His entire policy with Iran has been a failure. He has tried to bully and pressure Iran, and that's gone nowhere. Iran has refused to be pressured or bullied or or pushed, and instead they have demanded to be treated with respect. And they have not uh, they have not bowed to any of these wishes. So I think Donald Trump is looking for an opportunity to back out with, while not losing face with his uh, relationship with Iran. But I, I think the the other thing that only can stop this is the uh, creation of alliances where the other major powers of the world reorganize the political paradigm such as Alexander Dugan has talked about, the multipolar world uh, requires Russia and China and India, in a sense, and Iran to set up the new locus of power in the Middle East. Uh, Iran, let's remember, one of, the, one of the stories was General Soleimani was coming to receive and exchange ideas uh, between Saudi Arabia and Iran for a peaceful lessening of tensions, whether Saudi Arabia was complicit in the trap or if they are genuinely interested in redefining themselves, rebranding themselves uh, and, and alienating or, or separating themselves from the Wahhabi the fanaticism, that's another question. But the only solution is Russia stepping in and adding its muscle and its influence uh, into uh, influencing the minds of the rest of the world. They're very good at it. They're very transparent and honest and, and raw in many of their presentations. And the, the, while the United States is very deceptive and insulting and, and confusing, and the world is tired of that. So I, I think the world would be very receptive to seeing Russia, Iran, uh, China, uh, you know, Iraq, all establishing uh, the Middle East is a country where the U.S. needs to be expelled and sovereignty and respect for nations and non-interference and a settling of tensions uh, is, is the future. But with Scott, the United uh, States, it'll, it'll be the opposite. Uh, let me just make a, a final question. Now, uh, I don't know how will the conflict between U.S. and Iran end up, but uh, I have been told by many people who deal with uh, U.S. policies in the Middle East, very often the Americans go to the Iranians and they try to play chess with them. They tell them, okay, stop arming Hezbollah and we will give you Mac tomorrow on the plane to Tehran and you can kill and jail them and do anything for their crimes. Now, we have the Israeli factor in the back, which keeps Mac as, as a stone of uh, threat against Iran. Now, let us say that a new uh, Iran nuclear deal can be reached between the United States and Iran. Uh, maybe uh, Iranian administration will come into agreement because Trump, uh, I mean, he's, he's, uh, he has some personality problems and he, he is a man that he wants to be praised. And he told to Iranians from his beginning, come and let's have a deal with me, because I, he wants to show off. He's, he, he has some personality problem. But let us say that Iranians come into one agreement with, uh, with Trump. And if they come into an agreement, Trump have, have shown, like he showed with, with the Kurds in Syria, or with uh, Americans have, have shown with Nusra and ISIS and Al-Qaeda uh, and Taliban, that uh, they use you and, and, and in one moment they simply dump you. Yes. Yeah, abandon you. And uh, the, there is a very high probability that if Americans come into a deal with uh, Iranians, Mac will be abandoned. Yes. Uh, the, the Saudis that we believe fund them will be ordered from Washington. These people, they're useless. Just throw them under the bus. 
The big question that we have here in Albania is what will happen with these people? Because they have a paramilitary organization here. They have their supreme commander, uh, Mariam Rajavi. Uh, they receive funding from uh, Saudis, we believe, through UNHCR, around 500 euros a month for each uh, soldier. In the moment that their money will be cut, MEC will have no more money to run its organization. They need around 1.5 to 2 million uh, dollars a month to run their facility. So if we have an agreement between Iranians and uh, the US administration, the question is what will happen with these 4,000 jihadis? Europe is facing the same problem at present with uh, ISIS brides and children. There is a big debate, <laughs> the UK, uh, France, Italy, what have you, they, they're telling to Trump, no, 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 no. We don't want to take uh, ISIS jihadists back in our yeah. soil. The question is, what will happen with Mac? What do you think about it? Some, well, I, whenever I go to Albanian TV stations, I raise this question and I tell them, Can you please ask our American yeah. uh, 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 rulers if they will be kind enough to take them into Alaska or Texas. Of course, the American public will never accept that. They are going to shoot that president with us the kind of decision. But the question is, what is going to happen with these poor jihadists who now are in their 60s, in few words, it will be in, the, in their 70s. They are dying in, in, a, in a big number. So what do you think will happen with them? Well, I, I would say the wise course would be to position Iran as a peacemaker and Iran could say, we forgive you, we welcome you home, we will uh, we will listen to your complaints, we will adapt, you know, to, to make a peaceful resolution to, to bring you back if you wish to return to a country where you'll be guaranteed, you know, your, your ideas, your rights will be infused into Iranian society. Making Iran a peacemaker is the superior tactical position uh, in the eyes of the world. So it's not belligerent, it's not a murderer, it's not a killer, it's not a warmonger. Iran is welcoming its children home. At the same time, the militant, uh, the militant arm needs to be targeted, it needs to be destroyed, it needs to be imprisoned, it needs to have all finances cut off, it needs to be eliminated from influence of all areas of the public, it needs to be removed from universities, removed from broadcasts, any and all information, like Erdogan has done in Turkey sometimes, the same, uh, it, the same war stance needs to be invoked against the MEK by European nations by Albania, by, by the United States. So simultaneous to the carrot of welcoming them home, the stick needs to drive them out of their caves and uh, be absolutely intolerant of, uh, of any of their, their plotting and their plans to uh, violence and terrorism and such like that. So it, it needs to be uh, cutting them off financially, cutting them off informationally, making essentially putting sanctions on, on all members of MEK, shutting down all of their organizations simultaneous uh, and, and destroying any militant capabilities and driving them towards uh, you know, a peaceful coexistence. If they're not going to coexist peacefully, if they're not going to abandon their, their uh, fanatical jihadist uh, conquest ambitions, then they will be uh, conquered, imprisoned, or destroyed. That's the only way to wage war. There, there is no uh, middle ground. If there's no armistice, there's no peace treaty, then you're in a state of war. And if you're in a state of war, you have to destroy your enemy's capability to communicate, to feed itself, to raise money, to arm itself. And it needs to be isolated, and it needs to be done in pockets. And I would say uh, the, the intelligence sectors of uh, Russia, uh, again, Russia has a very uh, advanced intelligence directorate with, uh, with uh, uh, its capability of identifying the pockets of these MEK uh, operations and essentially uh, surrounding them and uh, constricting them and suffocating them. Well, I hope the Americans can take care of them like they took care of them when they destroyed the, the regime of Saddam Hussein and they arrested them and they 
uh, yeah. disarm them and they radicalize them because Albania doesn't have that kind of uh, capabilities. Albania is a very weak state. And I hope that Europeans think about it in advance. Scott, thank you very much for coming uh, and having this nice discussion with me. I'm very pleased and I hope uh, that the Albanian public is going to benefit a lot from your expertise and experience. And I hope to have you again in our show. Thank, thank you, you very much indeed. Bye-bye.